Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and it's June 19th, 2022 edition of Market Outlook. So, another very nasty week this week. Uh, there are some signs of hope, however. Let's get into it right away. So, first of all, um, one thing you can see from the daily charts um, on the key indices, we definitely hit new lows across the board. Now, one thing that's a bit um, uh, possible is if you take a look at the cues here, right, you can see we're at the bottom end of the Bollinger Band um, and holding it. Um, so it's possible um, that we might find that we're a bit oversold and could have a mean reversion type bounce. This in no way means that the market is in a situation that it can recover from this bear market. But if you take a look at the S&P, you know, the, uh, the situation is we were outside the bands, um, both on price and real motion, not quite back inside uh, on real motion. So what we like to see, of course, is that we get outside the bands, move back in, and mean reversion is starting. That is not the case at the moment, although we are certainly went from a bit overbought to oversold in short order. So not surprising with the massive rate increase and the speed in which rates have moved up. Now, before we leave uh, the key indices here, one thing I want to look at is the weekly charts. So there's a couple things to note that are also interesting to keep into your uh, framework. Number one, uh, not good. We broke down under the 200 week moving average in IWM. That is an important deterioration. However, if you look at the Qs, right, we're about three to 4% in the Qs from the rising 200 week moving average. We have a similar situation in the S&P and a bit closer on the Dow. So it's possible with us now outside of the Bollinger Bands on longer term real motion that we do find some support um, on those key levels. That's um, what we're sort of hoping for and that is where we develop a sort of technical bounce here. But we do think things are in for a lot more uh, problems here. And just to go back, um, even if we do get uh, what I mentioned, a technical bounce here, we do have important resistance across the board um, in, the, uh, in these key indices at the 50-day moving average. So you can see here 310 in the Qs, 410 in the S&P, um, uh, 185 uh, in IWM and 328 in the Dow. That is natural resistance that also corresponds with overhead resistance as well. Okay, now moving on to volume analysis. One thing that's interesting, even with this week's nasty uh, price action, uh, the number of accumulation days has basically stabilized and the number of distribution days is staying between three and four across the indices. So a lot of that massive distribution um, that resulted in the selling seems to have uh, eased up a bit. Now, uh, let's not uh, forget, of course, year to date, down 31% in NASDAQ, down 26% uh, rounding error here. Um, in the, the Russell. So um, we're definitely under extreme pressure. And you can see on a weekly basis, this is some of the wor worst performance we've ever seen uh, in the key indices. So right now, Russell's were down 7.3%. Um, that's a pretty ugly uh, action there. And uh, the S&P which is the key global benchmark 
certainly for U.S. equities, down 6% and 23% year to date. Okay, now moving on to uh, sectors, what is interesting is that energy, which has been just on a tear, was actually in corrective mode this week. That uh, is definitely um, helping mitigate some of the inflationary pressures, but it does feel like it's sort of uh, a needed correction. And remember here, energy year to date is still up 32%. Now, what is interesting in terms of the things that were down the least, consumer staples, definitely a risk off play. Now, what is also interesting in terms of things that didn't perform or sectors that didn't perform that bad was retail. Um, and the retail sector basically found support and could potentially be putting in a double bottom. So we definitely want to watch this because if the retail sector is definitely overdone on the short side and potentially is forming a bottom, um, at least a tradable bottom, that could uh, portend a technical bounce in the markets. But it's absolutely crucial that it holds um, these uh, levels and the lows of this week. All right, and now finally, if we move on to market hotspots, what's interesting uh, is that you're going to see the big feature this week um, is that energy um, got hit the hardest. Of course, it also has been on the biggest tear. So this is pretty normal for uh, a commodity-driven rally that got excessive that you go through a number of cycles. But you can see natural resources, um, just the whole energy sector, oil services, natural gas, natural gas, uh, uh, I mean, uh, oil and gas exploration, all got hit really hard over the last five days, down up to 20%. So definitely, that's the key thing to see. But even with uh, those type of inflationary pressures easing, the market still got hit extremely hard. So, and again, of course, uh, what makes sense is um, short uh, markets here actually had the overall best performance, including um, long volatility plays as well. So that just confirms the market sell-off. So net-net, we got a situation where um, the, uh, the rise in energy prices corrected quite a bit. All right, as you can see, still under uh, tremendous uh, overall pressure. Um, one thing you can certainly see um, is, hang on, is if you take a look at the biggest leaders here uh, over the last six months is still <laughs> oil, commodity prices, corn, uh, not surprising, uh, food inflation, definitely there as well. So what we have here is a needed short-term correction in energy, but overall uh, inflationary pressures are clearly obvious. And these are the things here that are up uh, between 30 and 90% over the last six months. Okay, that's it for now. Hope this all helps. See you next week and good luck with your trading.